Hey, Open Pyro again. This is Sam. Uh, today we're going to talk about some of the small successes we've had in the past few weeks, and then we're going to talk about uh, some of the directions we want to try to take the project in the very near future, mostly related to hardware applications. Specifically, we're going to show you some of the printing that we've done when using an air fluidized bed uh, of aluminum powder to feed our Rotoforge system coaxially through the tool head. And also we're going to show you some of the early tests that we're doing in trying to use a water fluidized bed or a water-based solution to try and improve the safety of the device and improve the just general overall user friendliness of the device. Alright, glad to have you on board. Turn the up a little more. We have too much pressure? No, we're getting yeah, something. Oh, much. we're getting it. It's really very. There we go. There it is. So hey Pyrojet community, uh, we've mentioned previously how we were considering using a uh, fluidized bed system. Using a air fluidized bed while it does work, uh, it is a little bit more dangerous than we would like to use, uh, especially considering that you know to make it safe we have to put the whole thing in an enclosure. We don't want to do that, so what we're going to try to do is we're investigating using a liquid fluidized bed, so powder or material in a solution of some kind, stirred, and we thought a way we could test that would be to use a stir plate with peristaltic pump pumping through a material deposition needle, and we were considering incorporating that, that type of needle into our future designs as to avoid the whole rotating assembly fluid sealed bearing problem by just bypassing the inside of a rotating shaft altogether and feeding it through a static uh, deposition needle. So we have uh, some amount of aluminum powder. I haven't bothered massing it, it's just a good amount. Uh, in water, it's currently spinning at some RPM. And we're going to try and pump it from this beaker to this beaker through a peristaltic pump and a Material deposition needle that what's it twenty gauge twenty two gauge it's a twenty gauge uh, yeah, yeah about, twenty about gauge point nine millimeter OD right. just small enough that it'll fit through the end of the one millimeter diamond nozzle right and we're slightly overdriving uh, this peristaltic pump it's rated for twenty four volts we're giving it twenty four point eight uh, and let's see how we go. That stuff is very heavily loaded. And here I'm just holding it just to make sure that if it does go, I can quickly make it spray into the speaker and so it doesn't go everywhere. And here I can even slow the feed down. And as you slow the feed down, we do have some settling in the nozzle, or some settling in the tubes. We can see what's coming out of this nozzle. It's it clearer is and more of it gets jammed up in the pump. Yeah. But as we as we speed it up, it seems to pick it back up. And we're just about out of fluid. Yeah, I'm going to let it go all the way and drain. And there will be some settled in the lines. We found there's not much we can do about that, especially trying to pump against gravity. But we're going to do what we can. We might be able to purge it out with like some additional fluid water or something. Right. 
But it's a heck of a lot safer than blowing flammable and neurotoxic metal powders uh, in a stream of high-pressure air. Yeah, it does leave behind some waste, but I would honestly much prefer that. So, <sighs> that's where we are right now, and eventually we'll get it mounted onto that uh, frame, and we will see uh, if we can actually print like this. We've shown before that we can print uh, under a uh, fluid bed somewhat. Uh, but if there's any system worth optimizing, I think this is worth optimizing more as it's just arguably a little bit safer. All right, thanks. All right, so we're doing a volume rate of flow test with our peristaltic pump, trying to figure out uh, basically how many mils per minute that we're flowing. And All right, about 16.9 seconds to get about 25 mils at 31 volts of 0.4 amps. That's pretty fast. That's a lot of fluid. All right, let's see. Uh, we're gonna we set up. And we're gonna set up again and see how just how slow we can go. Okay, I'm recording. All right, we're doing another volume rate of flow test on the same graduated cylinder. And I'm gonna move this towards the camera. There we go. We're running at 16 point something volt, 16 ish volts at 0.3 milliamps, and it looks like. 0.3 amps. 0.3 amps, and it looks like the gravitational head of moving the slurry is kind of overcoming the pump at the moment. That does seem to help, so it doesn't have to work so much against gravity. And the powder settles elsewhere in the lines, maybe. So it's always settling in the lines. Yeah. Unless you have to pump at the highest point you can. Yeah. That's probably just good practice. That's a much lower flow rate, though. Better. Maybe. We are getting a lot more settling, though. Yeah, at about. Still working. One minute to go about 20 mils. Yeah, it's still working, though. About 0.3 mils per minute. It's Michael here. Uh, I just wanted to go a little more in detail over what some of our plans are regarding the water-based fluidized bed system for pumping slurries into the rotating polycrystalline diamond FDM nozzle that is our tool head. Um, basically what we're planning on is having a regular tube from the peristaltic pump, like we were pumping into the 20 gauge deposition nozzle that we showed earlier in the video. We'll have that flowing a needle, the stainless steel needle from that deposition nozzle, going all the way down through the very end of the brass FDM nozzle at the end of the shaft of the motor that's rotating. And that nozzle will not be in contact with the FDM nozzle. The deposition needle will not be in contact with the FDM nozzle. It will come all the way to the end of the, dep of the FDM nozzle, and it will, it will not contact the surface, but it will directly inject a metal-loaded aqueous slurry or glycerol slurry or whatever kind of slurry we end up working with that turns out to work the best for the given material directly underneath the polycrystalline diamond tip of the tool, which is the FDM nozzle. And the FDM nozzle will be rotating around the stationary needle and this keeps us from centrifugating our, uh, our slurry. Basically it keeps the particles from being slung out to the sides and the particles being preferentially separated from the fluid as it flows down through the nozzle, which is a problem we ran into on multiple occasions with the current setup. It also helps eliminate the whole fluid sealing system by making the seals and the slurry handling elements completely separate from the FDM nozzle. It has the slight disadvantage of increasing our overall feature size because the nozzle has to be large enough to accommodate the needle and the needle has to be large enough to not clog whenever it's flowing a suspension of, of particles. But eh, we're making trade-offs to try and get something that works reliably and efficiently and safely on a home desktop. So we're just trying to realize something that works as cheaply and effectively as possible with minimal personal risk that's not spraying pyrophoric neurotoxic powders everywhere. Um, and basically what we expect to happen is this wet slurry comes down to the needle, it spreads out underneath the rotating tool head, and that rotating tool head will shear, flatten, and adhere the material in the slurry 
And when it does that, the grain boundaries will, of the metal particles will grow together, or of the particles that we're depositing, whatever they are, will grow together and exclude the suspension media, the water that goes through all whatever. Um, and that exclusion process is kind of like what happens with, say, limestone or other minerals in nature and may offer some benefits in terms of greatly reduced operating temperatures and the compatibility of different materials with other substrates. There's some stuff in the literature, I'll post some papers in the description below, um, that people have examined, others have examined uh, in their own research years ago on how underwater friction stir welding and underwater friction deposition uh, affects the quality of the deposits and the sort of parameters of the process. It's still not totally understood, but it's kind of interesting and it might have some benefits for us in the future. But beyond that, I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're actually looking at doing at the very at the business end, you know, at the tip of the, the system. We're probably going to move over to using a stepper motor because it has integrated, instead of a DC motor, because it has integrated current sensing and it's a little bit lighter and a little smaller. We will probably move over to deploying this system on a Ender 3 light gantry or a more rigid CNC frame. Uh, depending on whichever one we can get away with, because the actual contact forces that we have to apply we're finding are very small. Um, as long as we can get good enough control over the Z height. We're still working on dialing in exactly how tightly we need to control that Z height. Um, and the, I guess, last thing that we're interested in doing is getting closed loop sensing down, basically temperature monitoring and force monitoring, or at least pressure monitoring at the tool head, at the tool tip. That's still something we're working on and don't really have a great solution to just yet. So if any of you have good suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or uh, on the Discord or, or what have you, or send us an email um, or whatever you like, uh, post a response video. Uh, um, we always open to new suggestions and could really use the help sometimes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, with no further ado, uh, thanks a lot for watching the video and uh, hope to see you again in a week or two.